I guess we can start. Thank you, everyone. I won't keep you here long. I know that you're all waiting for the break, whoever is still remaining. It's been a long session. Uh, so thank you for being here. It's a pleasure for me to be here as well. It's my first time at Hacklu, so it's also exciting to be here as a speaker. So the program, really, my talk goes about what do you do when you actually get CTI funding? Uh, I'm Lucas Vilotos de Gilles. I'm the technical product manager at, our, at the CyberSoc team at NRD Cybersecurity. And before I was an IT project manager, I was an onboarding project manager, but really professionally, I'm an artist. So I've, I have a bachelor's in interaction design, a master's in contemporary sculpture. So really, I'm pretty new to, to cybersecurity. I think I've been here for two and a half, three and a half years right now. So uh, it's a new for me, but I'm also now a CTI program lead. For a little bit of context first, uh, who are we at NRD Cybersecurity? I think a lot of people know the other side of our business uh, through Villas Benetis and all of our cybersecurity capacity building, policy making. We have projects all over the world. But we also have what I think is more local in Lithuania. We're the first Lithuanian SOC provider, and we're the largest MSSP in Lithuania. So uh, it's funny that we have to say that we have 24-7 service with real analysts uh, rather than just 24-7 service. Uh, but we do have that. We have over 30 customers, around 25 analysts right now, and we have some critical infrastructure, fintechs, uh, various other private organizations in our customer basket. But how do you get a program funded, right? That's, I think, the first question everyone says, you know, CTI is a cost sink. What do you do? How can you get it done? Well, honestly, it fell into my lap. Uh, Vilus Benetis, our CEO, he filled out some project funding. So I have to say thank you to the EU for co-financing our project, Stock Share. Uh, together with the European Cybersecurity Competence Center, and of course, any views are my own, not theirs. So why did we get the funding? At a really quickly brief pace, why did we even apply for it? So NRD Cybersecurity, together with the Vilnius City Municipality, uh, both of us are the largest operating stocks in Lithuania. Uh, Lithuania is actively supporting democracies around the world. Uh, Vilnius is aspiring to be a leading digital de democracy economy and we're very near to both Russia and Belarus. So we have a lot of geopolitical threats as well. This means that we have a lot of cyber attacks all the time happening, especially after the Ukraine war. But you'll see that most of those were articles from 2022, and since then, not much has been posted, but it's always ongoing, continuing. Uh, one thing that I want to really mention is Lithuania, and in general, the people have been conducting a lot of crowdfunding campaigns to, for support for Ukraine. So initially, we bought uh, Bayraktars from Turkey for Ukraine. Next year, we bought uh, air defense radars and then uh, kits for soldiers to protect them. Uh, during this campaign, because we had already had three years of these crowdfunding campaigns, uh, we saw something that was quite interesting is one of the organizations, a, com a private company, that contributed multiple millions already to the crowdfunding, uh, they started experiencing very heavy attacks from a certain group. Uh, and it was really easy to say who the group was, just because as soon as any action was taken in the incident response, isolation, anything that you do, you straight away get a nice little telegram message from them saying, hey, go to sleep, you won't catch us anyways. So as soon as you take an action, straight away they reply to you in Telegram saying, hey, and you get a little bit of feedback. So it's quite nice to see some, sometimes attribution is easy. In general, the project objectives are to improve our detection, threat intelligence services and processes, creating a joint cyber th uh, threat intelligence sharing capability, both through structured and unstructured means, so like this, uh, and also to build out those and operate those shared capabilities. Within the CyberSoc team itself, though, uh, what was the situation? So back when I joined the team in 2022, uh, it was kind of, uh, the team was small. We had around 15 clients, but we had only around six analysts. Uh, our team lead had just left to another organization, and I was left as the only project manager. So where do you think we were in the intelligence cycle at that point? Uh, honestly, we didn't exist there. The intelligence cycle didn't know anything about us. We didn't know anything about it. So what do you do then? Again, for a, bit, a little bit more feedback in general how our structure works. So this is just an example. On the left-hand side, we have uh, deployments with Curadar or other such seams. Uh, and on the right, we have our in-house seam, Natrix. In general, the setups are exactly the same, with one difference that when we use Natrix, we have a central Natrix master that all of our analysts go uh, analyze through that. And that had, at the time, this uh, a misintegration. 
And meanwhile, everything else was being centralized through Jira. I know it's a weird choice, uh, but when we were launching our 24-7 service, we needed some quick way to basically just be able to prioritize alerts. We didn't need anything else. We needed to make sure that we can see across all tenants. We know what is the highest priority. We can track SLAs and all that. And then we feed that all into Power BI. So really, if we dig down into the CTI architecture there, that's all we had. We had a misinstance that fed into uh, one of our seams. And the only intel that we got was from first org misp and from uh, a honeypot that our development team had. But even then, nothing was done to actually make that useful. This is the number of alerts that we had from MISP in a one month period. How can you actually utilize that? Right now, this is how our architecture looks. It's fragmented, we're developing, it's been about a year of actual project work and trying to get the improvement going. Uh, so a lot of things are changing. On the right hand side, you can see a, lot, a list of tools that aren't really integrated yet, but they were planning on integrating into our final process that we're in the process of. We have Shuffler, Tines, and Jupyter Notebooks as sort of placeholder automations right now. And you'll see that the Jira is a very big box because we're still dependent on that since all of our business processes run in Jira anyways. But we have a lot more developed. We have tested a lot. And we're actually starting to operationalize using MISP for Curator and for everything else as well. And we've started ISAC. I'll get into that a little bit more. So I think more importantly, we're continually measuring our maturity. So we know our weaknesses, we know our goals, and we know how to improve and where to improve. Uh, we've actually started using the CTI operationally. We've held four threat intelligence meetings with the Lithuania and cybersecurity community with around 100, I'd say, unique people joining. Uh, we have monthly threat intel sharing meetings with our project partners. We have 12 media articles written for Lithuanian media just to get people aware of what's happening, what's going on, uh, everything about elections, uh, who's in charge in Lithuania with dealing with scams. Uh, so it turns out we have a whole police cyber patrol uh, division uh, and just in general sharing what we're finding. And before we started this project, our MISP had zero events that were created and shared. Uh, Today we have around 200 events that we've actually shared. Uh, these are hand verified by analysts, so we know that they're high fidelity, high confidence. And I think that's really important for us. And what did we do to get here? And what could you do better? So I sort of tried to recreate what we did. This isn't sort of a plan that we took at the start. This is how naturally the project progressed. So we set up the basic process to make sure that we actually meet the project goals. We made sure that we measured our maturity with the SOC CMM model, built out an initial roadmap. We started learning from all industry leaders. Uh, we focused on starting an ISAC as soon as possible, uh, created our priority intelligence requirements, a CTI process, and a formal description of our threat intelligence service. So the actual basic steps were really simple. It was making sure that we revive our MISP. So that's providing some MISP training for a few SOC analysts and setting up a whole new MISP instance and architecture design to share with our project partners. We created a very basic Jira automation to select what we actually want to review uh, for uploading to MISP. So rather than dealing with all the incidents at the very start where we might have something interesting, we already had a way to find where we know that it's a known threat, so it's going to be high fidelity and high confidence that it's an actual indicator. So and that's anything that we've already raised to the customer as an alert we can use that for threat intelligence as well. So we're using it at a later stage. It's not as quick, but it's still a really good way for us to build out the process. And then we had all of our KPIs defined through the project goals. In the SOC CMM, this was our maturity score for the threat intelligence service. Uh, so it was low, but that's exactly why we had this project. We're one of the largest SOCs and we didn't have a threat intelligence service. So that's why we needed this project. Using the SOC CMM then, we have all the different areas that we know we need to improve. We put that together with all of our project goals and we get a rough roadmap. So we sort of split it up into different areas where we wanted to just do the initial build out, then some learning, started unstructured sharing, beginning forming the ISAC, uh, slowly building out the automations, moving into CTI used for actual detection. Uh, then we wanted to actually move the detection to the triage stage so that the CTI would be useful for the SOC analysts when they're deciding whether this is something they want to escalate to the client or not. And then further, we want to start preparing to actually launch a CTI service as a commercial service for our clients. So what we did, we looked at our PIRs. So we grabbed the Intel 471, Covert Underground, General Intelligence Requirements Handbook, I think that's what it's called, 
Uh, we defined all of our stakeholders, got their requirements, we mapped out our PIRs. Uh, what we got as a result really after analyzing it is sort of looks like this. We need threat landscaping, formal reporting, RFIs, and an ISAC. We need it at all three levels, so strategic, tactical, and operational. But somehow in a CyberSox team, SIEM and sensor integration were at the lowest requirement. We didn't actually really look at this later until recently. We looked back at it and decided, yeah, maybe we put together the wrong requirements. What we did as a really basic process for uh, how to actually decide what we do for inputs, we took all of our existing processes and just looked at, okay, what can be used to create CTI? So as I said, any incident that was raised to the customer as a true positive, that automatically gets created as a new incident, as a new IOC for review for the CTI team. Uh, we have open source intelligence, certain processes. Those also go through some automations and get created as a ticket. If we do incident forensics, if we do threat hunting, all of that automatically will create a ticket for the team to review and make sure that we upload that to MISP if it's needed. And it's a really basic automation in Jira. If anyone's using it, very simple. But I'll get into why I don't actually recommend doing that. Uh, we had a whole process built around then what we do later. We were planning on doing some enrichment as well, all within Jira. But even the simple event uploading, adding any event, you do it in MISP, you do it in curl, you do it in Python, you do it wherever. If you take that same code, you do it in Jira, it will just not work. I don't know what it is. There's some non-breaking spaces that break the code, that break the JSON formatting, and Jira doesn't like it. You have to take a Jira response where it likes it and then copy that, put that back into automation, then it's fine. Uh, but it's okay, because as soon as we started actually doing all of this, Jira changed their pricing. So initially what everyone was doing was if you create an automation under a single project rather than globally, it didn't count towards your automation limits. So what does everyone do? Everyone creates one template, they copy that template to all the projects, and then they have free automations. So Jira caught onto that and they made all automations priced. Uh, so that wasn't great for our plans to do everything in Jira where we wanted to do enrichment, everything absolutely through API calls directly. Uh, so suddenly we realized that if we want to do that, our pricing goes up by about 10 times. Next, what we tried to do was we started, we wanted to start an ISAC as soon as possible, just because we saw that there was very little actual information about what's happening in Lithuania. Uh, we had a lot of information about global threats, but nothing about local threats. So we started to actually try to figure out, okay, what do we need? How do we share? We need to make sure that people know what's being shared. So let's use standardized objects, but we can only create objects for what we're actually seeing, what we're using. So just an example, we're like, okay, so phishing emails. We have, as a CTI team as well, you have to understand we don't always have access to the seam, to the XDR, to wherever the alert might have originally come from. So we have very limited information sometimes. So sometimes all that we will have is what was raised to the customer in the ticket. So for that reason, we've decided to have different options. For example, a minimal option where you only have the subject and the front name. That's it. You don't have anything else. We're going to say that this isn't as great of an event, but we still want to have the option for this. Then we say, what if we need to include the victim information? We also include details how to do that. Uh, but again, we come into issues where, hey, maybe we should use MISP templates. Those exist. If we take the default MISP phishing template, what do we see is it creates three different attributes, but MISP's own best practices say use objects rather than attributes. So even the templates straight away are different from what we're using, are different from what's the best practices, and there's already even some uh, differences there. We started preparing for actually forming the ISAC, and I really recommend using the X-ISAC just in general, even if you're not planning on starting an ISAC, use it instead of maybe a SOC CMM or something else that has some really great things for you to actually think about why you're creating your CTI, what you're doing with it, how you're sharing it. I really recommend looking at it. But we started basically looking at it, and again, we decided that we don't need to really do a lot of the templating and everything at the start. We need to just start sharing. And then we decided to start sharing, invited people to join, and this was as of yesterday. We have no one who's actually wanted to join. Uh, what happens? Some organizations that said they want to join, they're like, well, sorry, we don't use MISP, we use something else. Uh, and right now, we don't want to invest in integrating with MISP, okay? And then if we're saying that in Lithuania, there's not really a mature CTI market, 
a lot of organizations just don't even have a threat intelligence sharing platform to begin with. So again, they can't really join directly into that. So mistakes that we made, we focused too much on PIRs. We jumped way too quickly into trying to start an ISAC, not just because of the local community, but also just because it really hindered. That's not what we should have done. We should have focused on making sure that we have better IOCs, better knowledge internally before we actually start to share with others. We created a CTI process based entirely around Jira, tried to take a tool that's not meant for CTI and tried to mold it into what we needed. Don't do it. We tried too much to do too much from scratch in a house and in too many areas, so it took a lot of experimentation to see what works, what doesn't work, and we didn't focus enough on the value for a SOC team. So what I recommend for anyone else who might be interested in starting a CTI program, learn, allocate hardware and resources, give yourself, and really I want to focus on that, give yourself a lot of virtual hardware, whatever you need, to be able to play. Test different tools, integrate them, just have a lot of those resources available to play. In a commercial SOC, it's difficult to get those resources when you need them quickly. So if we had straight away asked for, okay, we need the server and we need to be able to do whatever we want in it, we would have had a much quicker time to be able to test things out. Operationalize basic CTI, use what you have access to. So if you're a member of FIRST, use FIRST MISPs, sync with that, don't try to find anything else. Start with one data source and slowly expand. If you can't deal with one data source efficiently, how are you going to deal with a lot? You're going to have way too many false positives. Create formal descriptions. Maybe you don't need them, but it's honestly a really good exercise just to try to find out what you might have not considered, and it helps guide new team members. Because if you're growing a CTI team, they'll need to know why you're doing things in a certain way. Make a roadmap, but don't focus on, on it too much. Just use it to really find what's the quick wins that you can get. Then measure, gather feedback. Uh, how you do that is up to you. Maybe you have your own KPIs, maybe you suck CMM, maybe use something else. And then actually try to redefine. You'll have something already. You'll have new knowledge. You'll have some functioning CTI processes, some actual use cases for it. So redefine what you're actually trying to do. What's the goal? Check if what you were originally trying to do, is that realistic and does that give you value right now? And share. So don't reinvent the wheel. I have some examples for maturity models, so there's quite a lot right now. Uh, first has its own, there's a SOC CMM that has a threat intelligence service section. Uh, then there was in first Berlin presentation of a CTI maturity model, and Intel 471's is sponsoring, I don't, I think it's Unit 42 officially, uh, is doing the CTI CMM, but I would say that's more for people who are actually, more for organizations actually providing CTI services rather than just CTI teams. Look at intelligence requirements. So there's Intel 471s and Red Hats. I think these two are the main ones. And for easy open source intelligence collection, honestly, don't try to build scrapers for all different websites and try to see what's what. Uh, until IBM takes us down, this is really useful. You don't need a license for this. This is accessible by everyone. Basically, this is just a RSS feed of different blog posts, things like that, that IBM has gone through and seen, okay, yeah, this is useful. Uh, they share some sample indicators, they give you a link, they give you a nice little summary, so you really don't need to do much scraping. You just grab that feed, automate some filters, and you can then actually go into the website and get all of the IOCs that you need. Attend conferences. Just like Hackloo, I also recommend for CTI. So I have some samples of talks that really go into the CTI process on forming a CTI team, building re requirements. This is what I really found useful and I keep coming back to while we're working. And don't focus too much on the intelligence requirements, start with the actions. So again, this is from one of the talks in Berlin. If we had actually defined our actions first rather than trying to go through all of our PIRs, I think this is what we would have come up with as our goals. So we have our stock share project goals that are really set, but they are more uh, how much of what we need to share. Then we have the increased stock efficiency and value. Our team really needed just, we needed to focus on getting some new detections that we knew are highly accurate then increase the efficiency of existing processes and use it to triage, to aid triage. And then customer service, they just want dark web monitoring, they want to know if there was any leaks, and eventually they'll want advisory and threat, threat landscaping. So this is completely different from the intelligence requirements that we had before. And as I said, use existing data sources. So just using the first feeds, uh, as I said before, we had a lot of noise just by filtering down to a couple of organizations that we know provide valuable information for us that we can actually rely on. We can straight away cut down that number. 
from 67,000 to 200 alerts. And even those, as you can see in the graph, are really for events. So I really think that you should just start small, test, and play. And I invite you all to share. And if anyone actually wants to join our ISAC, you know. <laughs> This resonates a lot with what I've been through the last few years, so it's many familiar points. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Yes, we do. Hi. I just want, thanks very much, really interesting. Um, I don't know how you managed to get through it, spoke quite quickly but um yeah lots of content just wondered how do you measure success especially if you're bidding for more um funds so based on obviously you're gonna make mistakes and that's part of the process but um i just wondered how you you measure that success and the impact that you have yeah so i think it's uh I'm quite fortunate, so while I'm working on the CTI as a program lead, I'm also one of the leads for our CyberSOC team. So uh, on the one hand, we have a lot of uh, KPIs within the SOC itself that I know that I can use the CTI to improve. So we have, obviously, uh, we need to uh, reduce the number of false positives, different values like that. And since I'm leading both, I can really easily show, look, by implementing CTI here, we've reduced the number of the time that we've spent on triaging incidents. We have reduced the number of false positives. We have created additional detections that we otherwise wouldn't have had. So uh, for us, we're not really looking too much into how much we're spending uh, on the CTI program. Right now, we're, we treated the first year as completely learning. Uh, and now we have a good roadmap going forward for knowing what we need to do. And at this point now, we're looking at, we're starting to really uh, define what those goals are to add value. And we're honestly just doing KPIs. Uh, everything is being tracked in JIRA, being fed into Power BI, and I'm monitoring daily, weekly, monthly on that level, on the business perspective. But otherwise, we're measuring the SOC CMM uh, around once a quarter uh, on a quick go-through, and then once a year we do a full evaluation. So for the project goals, my main thing is that we're increasing our maturity because we just need to contribute to a safer Europe. So I'm not worried from the project too much about adding value to the company or anything like that. We're, I think that that value will come at the end of the project. That's the main goal for us. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? All right, if not, I, I, this is more of a question slash statement. Would you agree that the most important part of a CTI program is to be aware of who your stakeholders are and know how you can make your CTI program and your output actionable for these stakeholders? If you want it to be used or if you want to keep getting funding, uh, then yeah. <laughs> so you'd recommend going regularly back and checking with them if you're still delivering in line with their expectations? In general, yeah. I'm saying I'm in a fortunate position where... I have those project requirements from the grant agreement, and I don't need to keep going back. I know I have that list, and I'm just following that. Uh, and then the but SOC, re that's the ones that I change. care about. Requirements can change. Requirements can change. Uh, the SOC analysts are the main ones that I'm worried about right now, and they're the ones that I keep coming back to. But otherwise, if I didn't have the funding, I would be really only stressing about the same PIRs that Villas had originally put together, which was our shareholders just so that I could keep getting funding. <laughs> All right, let's see. We're out of questions. So thanks a lot, Lucas. And uh, there's a coffee break now. Please be back before the end of it.